This is a video by Real Life Lore, sponsored by The Great Courses Plus. We all know that volcanoes can cause a massive amount of destruction whenever they erupt. They can wipe out entire cities like what happened to Pompeii in the Roman Empire, or devastate entire regions like when Mount St. Helens erupted in the United States. But is it possible that if a volcano erupted with a massive enough force sometime in the future, could it actually destroy all of human civilization on the planet? At some points in the past, volcanoes have actually come pretty close to doing exactly that. First, we need to understand something called the Volcanic Explosivity Index, which is a scale used to measure the eruptions of volcanoes. The scale goes from zero being a relatively tiny eruption that is happening all over the world continuously, all the way up to an eight, which would be a mega-colossal eruption with earth-shattering consequences, similar to an asteroid impact that only happens about every 50,000 years on average. For reference in regards to how powerful volcanoes can actually get, both the Mount Vesuvius eruption that annihilated ancient Pompeii and the Mount St. Helens eruption in 1980 would both be classified as only a level 5 eruption on this scale. Which is incredible because the Mount St. Helens eruption released 24 megatons, or 1600 times the scale of the atomic bomb dropped on Hiroshima, which means that things only get ridiculously more powerful from here. Perhaps the best known level 6 volcanic eruption was the Krakatoa Nightmare in 1883. The volcano was located on this island in Indonesia and exploded with the awe-inspiring force of 200 megatons. 13,000 times more powerful than the Hiroshima atomic bomb and four times more powerful than even the mighty Tsar Bomba, the largest nuclear weapon humanity has ever detonated. This epic explosion generated the loudest sound ever known to have happened in human history, shattering sailors' eardrums that were located 64 kilometers from the blast and capable of being heard perfectly clear as far away as Perth, Australia. Almost the entire island that the volcano was located on was completely blown apart. The blast was so powerful that it sent coral reefs that had been dormant for centuries on the ocean floor hurtling towards land as if they were asteroids. And the explosion generated 30 meter high tsunamis that ravaged the rest of Indonesia. Everybody on the nearby island of Sibisi was killed in the immediate aftermath, and in total up to 120,000 people in the islands were killed in the immediate aftermath of the disaster. There were reports of human skeletons on rafts that had gotten lost at sea trying to escape that began washing up on the east coast of Africa one entire year after the explosion. But perhaps the worst part about volcanic eruptions is the massive amount of ash that gets pumped into the atmosphere that can block out the sunlight and cause global temperatures to drop dramatically. In the case of Krakatoa, global temperatures fell by 1.2 degrees Celsius the following year and did not recover for another four years. The ash in the atmosphere caused weird optical effects too that made the moon occasionally appear blue or even green. And even this famous painting is theorized by some to actually depict what an accurate sky above Norway looked like in the year following the eruption. Another deadly level 6 eruption happened exactly 100 years previously than this in Iceland, in which more sulfur dioxide was pumped into the Earth's atmosphere in just a few months than the entire industrial output of all of modern-day Europe combined for three years. This created a toxic gas cloud that killed 50% of all animal life on Iceland, which caused a famine that killed 25% of the human population on the island. The toxic cloud then moved across the sea over to the rest of Europe, where 23,000 more people died in Britain alone from the poison gas. But let's get a little more crazy and move up to what a level 7 on the scale would look like. One of these such eruptions created the largest explosion ever witnessed in recorded history back only two centuries ago in 1815. Also taking place on an island in Indonesia, this explosion shot 400 million tons of ash into our atmosphere that plunged the entire planet into a year-long winter. All life on the island where the eruption took place was annihilated. A circle 600 kilometers wide from the blast was shrouded in darkness for days. And the year of 1816 became known as the year without a summer due to the fact that it snowed in New York and Maine in the middle of June. And Quebec City got a full 30 centimeters of snow during the same month. This was certainly a very devastating eruption that may have immediately killed up to 100,000 people, but it may have also caused famines worldwide due to the cold temperatures that killed crops across the world. But 75,000 years ago, an enormous volcano may have caused humanity to come the closest that it's ever been to ultimate extinction. The Toba supervolcano, also located in Indonesia, exploded with a level 8 on our scale in these prehistoric times. 
It was 3,000 times more powerful than what happened at Mount St. Helens and ejected 100 times more ash than even the Tambora explosion did in 1815. This was enough ash to completely bury all of Luxembourg beneath a full kilometer of the stuff, or all of Argentina beneath one meter. It sent the planet into a decade-long winter where global temperatures dropped by as much as 15 degrees Celsius, and early humanity was possibly almost destroyed by it. The global human population may have dwindled to as few as a mere 3,000 people during those hard times, which is about the same number of people that currently follow me on Facebook and Twitter. But humanity managed to persevere, which leaves the interesting question of what would happen if a level 8 supervolcano exploded today. The most likely and devastating culprit would be the Yellowstone supervolcano in the United States. The entire Yellowstone National Park is hiding a volcano of gargantuan proportions right beneath her visitors' feet. It has experienced three level 8 eruptions in the past 2.1 million years, with the most recent one happening 640,000 years ago. There is enough magma in the volcano system underneath the surface today to fill the entire Grand Canyon 11 times over, or bury the entire Netherlands with one full kilometer of molten rock. It is estimated that the volcano has about a 1 in 700,000 chance of exploding each year, which is absurdly unlikely, but what would happen if we were absurdly unlucky? Well, here is a map of what the damage would look like. The states of Wyoming, Idaho, and Montana would be largely buried beneath a full meter of ash which would render them all uninhabitable. Anybody who didn't evacuate from these three states would likely be killed in the aftermath of the explosion. Salt Lake City and Denver would also likely suffer major damage and casualties. The only parts of the mainland U.S. that would escape any ashfall would be southern Texas and southern Florida. This event would likely create either the largest mass grave or the largest refugee crisis in history, as entire states worth of people would have to be evacuated and probably flee east. The entire western United States would be completely devastated and agricultural production in the country would be crippled. It would be the biggest disaster in history and likely throw the United States into a depression multiple times worse than the 1920s stock market crash. This in turn would throw the entire world economy into a severe depression and coupled with a 10 year long winter caused by lingering ash in the atmosphere and the resulting massive crop failures and famines and the world would be a very tumultuous, cold, and frightening place. Human civilization may be changed forever by that eruption, and who knows what catastrophic change it may bring about, but it likely wouldn't completely end us as a species. Life would go on in some way or another, as it always has. Now after saying all of that, I must take the time now to once again thank my incredible sponsor, The Great Courses Plus. The Great Courses Plus is a subscription on-demand video learning service where you can subscribe to and watch unlimited top-notch courses that are taught by brilliant Ivy League professors, as well as experts from National Geographic, the Smithsonian, the Culinary Institute of America, and hundreds of other extremely qualified individuals. They offer an unlimited access to thousands of different lectures over pretty much anything that you could possibly be interested in. If you enjoyed the video that you just watched, then I would strongly recommend their course titled The Joy of Science, which includes lectures on volcanic activity, earthquakes, and plate tectonics. It's a really fun subject to learn about and helped out a lot with the research that I conducted for this video. You can watch these or hundreds of other courses completely for free when you sign up for a 30-day free trial using the link on your screen now, www.thegreatcoursesplus.com slash reallifelore, or you can click on the link that's in the description. If you enjoyed the video that you just watched, then I hope that you'll subscribe to my channel by clicking here. You can visit my Patreon by clicking here, watch some older videos of mine by clicking over here on the left, and I'll look forward to seeing you again for the next new video soon.